<laughs> I'm a little nervous about it. Good. A little tender there, yes? Oh my. Oh my. Okay. Oh. And they are just rock hard, aren't they? So we'll let that drop. You had better flexibility. It feels so loose. Ooh, that tender? I'm gonna ease into it. Yeah. Unlock your full potential at Crack Addicts. Today we are with Julia Taylor, who is a fitness model, and she's been dealing with a little bit of vertigo migraine. What have you tried? I actually stopped working out for this past week, so I am taking some medicines that my my primary doctor gave me. Okay. The one is helping, not to the full extent that I'd want, if that makes sense. Okay. And then the other one, I didn't really like it. it. Does have some serious like side effects to it. So are you continuing to take that? The one, no, because okay. I had the side effect. But the other sure. one, yes, because it is supposed to help. So. So you've had to take a couple of weeks off of working out. Talk a little bit about that impact on you. I absolutely hate it. Drives me insane. Basically, I don't have any content to post. I'm not really engaging with my followers as much, which sucks. I want to help them, teach them, and grow. Mm -hmm. It just, it makes me really upset because I can't do the th one thing I love and, like, love teaching, so. All right, so for right now, I'm just kind of feeling around. Okay. I'll let you know uh, what we're going to do before we do it. Okay. And you certainly have some tension in there, don't you? Yes. And now, so you've been to a chiropractor, mm -hmm. and one, just the one time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to start with is just some muscle treatments okay. and start loosening up some of these muscles because they're tight, aren't they? Mm-hmm. My neck always gets really tight. That's why I have the like forward pedal to a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh huh. Wow. So I was just releasing some muscles mm -hmm. there in your upper cervical spine and obviously there was those pops so yeah. those joints really wanted to get released so that's good these are your scaling muscles right here and they are just rock hard aren't they yes Holy I told you that's why yeah you weren't joking I Trying to do like some stretches, but I need to honestly do them more because they are so tight. Well, we're going to give you some specific exercises to deal with your neck stability and control today. So that'll be some good stuff for you beyond just stretching. And another little restriction there. I feel it. Right there, isn't it? So that's yes. what I'm releasing. So what this is, this is called active release technique. And so I'm releasing some of those soft tissues, the muscles and tendons in there that are just beaten up from all these, however many years you've been using this, this altered posture to how you move. All right, good. Now I'm going to start feeling your joints. And it's a little bit better already because we had some of those nice releases. All right, so now we'll do the, the adjustment part. So what I want to do is bring you right over here, and there will be a little sudden thrust, okay? Okay. All right. Good. Drop your head. Good. Oh, my. Very good. Did it hurt? No, not at all. It's just scary. It was so loud. Okay, good. And now we'll go right on over here. I'm also doing the segments right at the top of mm -hmm. your neck, which they're so close to your ear, you know. All right. Let that go. Okay. Very good. I'm going to give you a little yank here. Good. Okay. All right, good. So we got your upper cervical spine, those muscles that can easily cause and contribute to headaches, migraines, 
um, that sort of thing. We got that going. Now I'm going to start a series of muscle tests mm -hmm. to tell me about other segments that might need treatment, okay? okay. It feels so loose. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it feels nice though. Yeah. It's like looser. Yeah. Good. So we're going to see if we can't press a reset button on the segment where the nerve comes out of there so that you can get a little bit better function. Relax. Good. Hold it right there. Pushing down, don't let me go. One of those places where you had a little bit of imbalance. Okay. Well, so we'll go right in there and I'll press into it, okay? Okay. Good. So we're going to adjust this segment right there. Let that go. Good. Hold it right there. Thumb and pinky. Pulling apart. Don't let me. Ready? Go. I'm going to look. Those nerves that were in that segment that we just adjusted, they also control your, your wrist and your... Uh-huh. A little clicky, huh? Yeah. You have wrist issues? Um, oh, yes. gosh. So we're feeling it some hurt, shifting yes. and clicking here a little bit when we're feeling the motion of her joints. Good. Thumb pinky, pulling apart. Ready, go. We're going to do an adjustment underneath your rib cage. So, you're going to put your right palm on your ear. I'm going to stick my thumb in your armpit. I'm going to wrap my hand around your shoulder blade. Right. We're going to get your rib cage and shoulder girdle underneath your shoulder blade. Good. All right, so relax here, and I'm going to thrust down like that. Okay. Deep breath. Breathe on out. Oh. <laughs> Very good. You okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to pull your elbow out. Okay. Don't let me. Ready? Go. Again. Still a little bit weak, huh? I'm scared because my boots. <laughs> yeah, you thought I was going to pop it or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, I went around it. No, like like pulling this way. You know what I mean? Oh. Okay. So let's make sure we're not going that way. So I'm pulling out like that. So okay. if you hit yourself, you're going to hit you right there. Right? Ready? Go. So I'm going to go grab right here. And I will do a little thrust, okay? Okay. Good. So now, just like I was doing muscle releases to your upper neck, I'm going to do that up here. And see how is the function of your chest and shoulder muscles. I know my chest is really tight because I, was, I got my boots under my muscle and before I was getting them done, I was told to do stretches by my by Jason mm -hmm. because it was so tight. Mm -hmm. So I did do that and it helped a lot, actually. So when, um, when I was first dating my, my wife, mm -hmm. he was, uh, she was working for Jason and... My family is friends with him. That's why I call him that, not to be weird. Because I was like, I mean, I call him by his first name. You're probably like, what? Well, no. But, yeah, I call him by the same thing. Yeah, I know. But most people, like, it's a doctor. Right? Um, I just remember talking to her. This is before we were dating or anything like that. And just telling her about how people get, whether it's breast augmentation or breast reconstruction, whether, you know, maybe it was mm -hmm. breast cancer, how jacked up these muscles get mm -hmm. and how much they really need care afterwards. And, and I don't think the majority of surgeons out there are aware that there's stuff to do beyond just stretching. Yeah. And we feel plenty of muscular tension in your pecs, pec minor, that we're releasing here. Oh, I bet you do. As weird as it sounds, I feel, I feel like my pulmaris longus. Like it's going all the way up there. Yeah. <laughs> nice little anatomy drop there. <laughs> That's where I felt it. So I was like, I, could, I know the muscle that it's out. That yeah. I feel it. Okay. Let's do that same muscle test. Hold it right okay. there. I'm pushing out. Don't let me go. And that way. Okay. Did that hurt too? No, it just feels really weird. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Good. Good. I <laughs> like my left. Yeah. Okay. 
relax your elbow. Breathe out. Oh, good. Sometimes it feels good, sometimes it does not. Just like we did on the other side. Good. Hold it right there. Pushing out, don't let me. Ready, go. Your chest and shoulders were tight for a real long time. Yeah. You feel these tight bands in there that I'm yeah. releasing? Pushing out, don't let me go. Your bicipital tendon that controls your biceps, but it's part of your shoulder stability, is mm -hmm. very tight. The long head or short head? It's before that. It's before the. Uh, oh, just bifurcate. the tendon? Yeah. I got you. Good. Straighten your hand. Oh. Pulling towards me. Don't let me. Ready? Go. Lower body here. And those hips. It's your right hip that mm -hmm. bothers you when you're doing squats. And yes. the left hip clearly doesn't internally rotate. Nope. Okay. All right. That's when it hurts. That's like when it hurts? When, like my right hip, when you do flexion and internal rotation, and it's like anterior where the pain is. I do flexion and external. External rotation or internal rotation? Internal. Okay, got it. Internal rotation of the hip, external rotation of the, the knee. Yeah. So the left hip is a little bit restricted. I'm going to do a little adjustment here. Good. Good. And that opened it up a little bit. And that hurts. Mm hmm So we'll do a little... Manipulation there. Good. Okay, probably didn't feel good, but how does it feel right now? Better. Less bad. It feels like it clicks a little bit still, though. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Muscle test, pushing down like that. Okay. Don't let me. Ready? Go. <laughs> good. <laughs> it already went. Okay, lay on your back. Muscle test, so I'm going to push okay. down like that. Don't let me. Ready? Go. How about... Still a little bit there? So I don't feel it, but it's definitely limited. Let me tell that. Okay. We're going to muscle test where I push down and out. Don't let me. Ready? Go. A little bit weak there. Down and out. Don't let me. <laughs> That's ready to go. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Lay your back. Muscle test, pushing down and out. Don't let me go. Heel, is that from high heels or something? Oh, no, I cut my foot. I was shutting the door and I shut the door on my foot and it scraped the bottom. Of my yeah, that was funny. Oh, it hurt so bad. Okay. I'm going to do a little adjustment where I kind of yank you here. Can you hold on to the table? That's perfect. Good. And then we'll do that over here. Try to relax. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was really cool, just because like I didn't realize how many muscles you had to activate, stabilize, basically, yeah. just to do like the simple thing. And like yeah. I've known that basically muscles like to work together; they don't like to be isolated. Yeah. It's more beneficial to do basically compound movements rather than isolation, but add in some isolation. Sure. And just because your body likes to work as a whole and work bunch of muscles mm -hmm. I had to use everything else just to simply yeah lift my neck up well the other thing is what you want is when you move your body you want those stabilizing muscles and forces to fire first yeah and then the movement areas to move second but what happens is we screw that up due to poor posture due to injuries due to phones phones you know you name it exactly so what we did is we turned on those stabilizing for, uh, forces first and then had you move and the more you do that exercise, the more that's going to be your automatic muscle memory where you yep. don't have to think about turning on uh, stabilizing muscles. when you Same sort of formula where we engaged stabilizing forces first and then had you extend through your hips. I thought that was pretty unique just because 
I do so much glute movements. I'm like, oh, my glutes are like stable. My glutes are basically strong. They weren't at all. Were I they? know. No, because typically I'm doing a lot of weight, but I'm not activating those stabilized muscles. No, could you feel or tell a difference when you held that weight that your hips were more stable? Yeah, my upper body felt more. I want to say like locked down. When I didn't have the weight, my upper body was moving, which made my like lower body unstable, so it would move. But when I was like, when I had the weight, it almost felt like someone was like holding my upper body or my upper body was like locked down so that I could shift a little bit more and control it with my lower body. I definitely feel like looser, if that's not weird. I really want to go to the gym now, but I know this is going to make me sore too because a lot of people don't talk about that, but they do say chiropractic makes you sore from just your body's not used to the adjustments. It's yeah. putting your body into a new movement, which is better for your body, so your body's sore from it. Right, all those segments that we just got moving are not used to moving, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be a shock to, the, to your body exactly. system. Exactly, but it definitely feel a lot better. Many times when our neck does not have ideal function and movement, uh, whether it was because of a long history of poor posture or abnormal shoulder movement or whatever it is, can put weird stresses on your neck which can impact and, and contribute to migraines or headaches. Was this scary for you? No. No? Some of the things I was like, oh wow, I didn't expect it to like kind of be like that, but like with my neck, because yeah. I think a lot of people get scared with the whole neck because it's do. scary if you yeah. were to go to someone basically that has no idea what they're doing, then it could be scary because one wrong turn, <laughs> something's <laughs> messed up. Sure, sure. But it's when you go to someone you trust, it's really good. I'm glad you're feeling better after the adjustment and you certainly have some things to work on that mm -hmm. I think will have a positive impact on, on you and your life and your career going forward. Don't be a stranger. We're always here to, to help you okay. if you ever are in need of anything. We are with Amy Good. Amy comes to us from Feel Good Fitness. Uh, <laughs> she's been telling me about some issues she's been having. So Amy, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on with I've gotten really busy, so I haven't really had the time to go out and do a lot of cycling. Been doing a little bit of running. Mm -hmm. I had a back injury like 11 years ago that was probably the result of a lot of running back then. I had a complete rupture between L5 and S1. Ugh. Ever since that, injury I just have a lot of tightness on my in my right hip my piriformis and now that I'm running again I feel it kind of getting worse and it makes me think or worry that that could have been maybe something related to the original back injury and I just want to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Now when you had that original disc issue did you see any medical profession? Well I did go to an orthopedic surgeon and but I was pretty much in pain and not a functioning person for about six months. Um, like couldn't sit or stand or move at all without having somebody around to help me. So I got two epidurals. The first one didn't really do anything. I think the second one must have hit the nerve and got it to calm down a little bit. So that it helps. was, you know, it was between L5 and S1. So mm -hmm. it was a complete tear. And I'm afraid now that when you lose a little bit of that mobility in one joint, it's always the next one in line that you have a problem with. So I'm trying to you know, be a little bit smarter this time around. I don't want to end up in the same situation and injured again. So that's one thing. I don't, I don't necessarily believe it has okay. to go that way. Okay. I believe even if you have an injured area of your body, we can stabilize that area and minimize the impact mm -hmm. and retrain your body patterns to where it does not have an impact on other parts of your body. So that's what we'll be looking to sort of start to accomplish today okay. and give you some strategies that you can use in your own uh, practice of your own fitness and then just how you move your body so that ho hopefully it does not continue to be such an issue. Mm -hmm. And then of course we want to make sure that her hip is not continuing to stiffen up during uh, the running as she's, you're training for an event, right? Yeah. So I'm going to do the New York City Half Marathon, which is next month. Very exciting. Have you ever had chiropractic care before? I did um, and it ended up being a really bad experience. The How so? The, well, he didn't take any x-rays. Here I am with like a complete ruptured disc in so much pain and he kind of just the way I remember it threw me down on the table and just started trying to adjust me mm -hmm. and I remember him going wow you're really tight and I think I had tears coming down my eyes and Ugh. and it so it was a really bad experience so you're really excited about getting treated today <laughs> huh? I'm, I'm a little nervous about it okay. but um I've sent a bunch of clients to you and everyone's had a really good experience so mm -hmm. hoping it helps me uh, mm -hmm. is there anything in particular that you are um, fearful of in this process. Oh yeah, um, 
you know, the, the big neck cracking and just kind of like laying there and having your head kind of thrust to the side it looks very unnatural. Okay. And sounds unnatural. Sure. Um, so that's the one thing that kind of freaks me out a little bit. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're not the first person to say that yeah. ever. So uh, we are aware of that. And what we're going to do is take every precaution to check her out and give her a full physical examination and x-ray to see if she's an appropriate candidate for manipulation and adjustments, or mm -hmm. maybe she's not. And yes, there's less joint space there. But your next segment over looks okay. Looks fantastic. Okay. Doesn't it? This is something we can deal with. Other than that, I don't see any gross abnormality or contraindications to you being uh, getting chiropractic care. Your neck, we've got the one segment down low that does look like it's been beat up on. The design of your anatomy, you really want to have a very flexible neck. This gets starts getting stiff. As a result, down low starts moving way too much. Mm -hmm. When it moves too much, that excessive inappropriate motion leads to some of this degeneration. For six hours a day. Yeah. Like yeah. That on a bike. One hundred percent. Okay, Amy. So we checked out your. Um, your spine on the x-rays. We saw a trouble spot in the lower part of your neck and of course that L5-S1 trouble spot in the lower part. And I told you we want to get your upper neck moving a lot better. We want to make sure all the stabilizing forces and muscles are present in the lower part of your neck as well as see what kind of contributions you get from your shoulders and your mid-back as far as too much stress on your low back. So I'll be checking out a whole bunch of things okay. and seeing uh, what we need to do to improve how you move and control your body, okay? Okay. So we'll go right in here. And for now, I'm just feeling around. And anything we do as far as snapping or cracking or popping or anything, I will clear with you before we do it. I'm still just checking you out. And we got a trouble spot up here. Right. A little stiff. Did you feel what I was talking oh about yeah. that? Yeah, I felt my whole body move. You felt your whole body move? Yeah. Uh-huh. And you feel that spot too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so both of those spots are in the upper part of the neck. And like I said, if you can't move well here, gonna you're going to move too much here. Yeah. So I would like at this point to do an adjustment up on your upper part of your neck. Okay. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ease into it and kind of do a fake one, and then we'll do the real one. But you can feel that spot right there that's a little limited, yes? Yeah. Okay. So we'll let that drop. Good. That was tense. Yeah? Uh-huh. Still with me? Yeah. All right, and I'm, we're going to feel that spot. And now there's some give and some wiggle there, right? Oh, yeah. And then this one's a little higher up, and it's actually, it's probably a little bit more stuck, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Good. Very good. Just gases escaping from the, the joint capsule, not unlike when you, you crack a knuckle, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're already moving better. Wow. All right, now I'm going to start a series of muscle tests that will tell me what stabilizing forces are present and not present in the lower part of the neck. Okay. So we'll start over here. I'm going to push your head against your shoulder both ways. Okay. Don't let me do that. Okay. And with all of these muscle tests, stand your ground as I try to push you away. Okay. Your job is not to overpower or win during a, a muscle test, okay? And we'll do an adjustment right there. Good. And now we're on C6 right there. And so we'll do another adjustment here, okay? okay? Good. So we stimulated that, um, that joint and that nerve. So then we find out, make a fist, pushing down, don't let me go. Okay. So we just pressed reset on your, your neck and your shoulder. And during the progressive rehabilitation section, we'll be able to start retraining your movement and your posture. Okay. Okay. So palm down, elbow locked. I'm going to pull towards me. Don't okay. let me go. That's pretty good. Pushing down, don't let me. Very good segment. So we'll adjust there, okay? Good. Thumb pinky, pulling apart, don't let me. 
Okay, I'm gonna stick my thumb in your armpit. I'm gonna wrap my hand around your shoulder blade. I'm gonna get all up in your, all up in your grill here. Okay. Good. So we'll get in here, and you're gonna relax your elbow, and I'm gonna thrust down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Deep breath. Breathe out. Ooh. There you go. Some cracking. <laughs> yeah, some cracking. Which is where your sternum and your clavicle meet. So we'll go over here, relax. And this isn't terribly comfortable. Okay. Hold it right there. So I'm going to adjust where your sternum and your ribs meet. Okay. So again, relax here. Good. Hold it right there. C6. Oh, yeah. Good. Hold it right there, pushing down. So here's your clavicle and here's your chromium. So they meet right there at the AC joint. And we'll go right in here. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. So if the bicep is weak, a lot of times this bicipital tendon mm -hmm. can kind of pop out of its place. So what I'm going to do. Make sure as you externally rotate, it doesn't pop out. So I'm going to kind of push it forcefully over here a number of times. And I imagine this is pretty uncomfortable for you. Good. Straighten your hand, pulling towards me, don't let me. Still not very good. Okay, interesting. Put the hand here. I'm just going to put my hand over here like this, and then I'm going to pull. Don't okay. let me go. So we're going to do an adjustment here. Big old hug. Good. Sit your head up towards me like a sit-up a little bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little thrust like that. Breathe out. Good. And more. Chin to chest. Okay. Relax. Good. Okay. Thumb pinky. Pulling apart. There we go. That's better. Now, pushing down. Don't let me. It's a little bit better. Good. No pleasant cracks or anything. No. Joints aren't doing great. Hold it right there. Mm -hmm. Pushing out that way. Good. A little tender there, yes? A little bit, yeah. Ooh. A right there. there. Okay. All right. I'm going to come around on this side. All right. So we'll do an adjustment here. We're going to bring you over here, breathe out, good, good, and right there as well, breathe on out, good, that's stiff, huh, do you feel a difference between when I go here, when I go on the left, yeah, okay, Okay. Uh, do me a favor. Bend, uh, bend both your knees. Good. And relax. Yeah, that one's a shock, isn't it? A little bit. So your internal rotation, both sides, is a little bit limited. Uh, are you aware of that? Do you do stuff to address that? Well, I, I do that 90-90 stretch yeah. all the time, and that's how I, you know, I just, I feel like nothing ever seems to change, though. Yeah. Because what I'm going to do is a little bit of a manipulation here into internal rotation 
from this position right here. And there's no fun cr cracks or pops or anything. Good. Okay. And we'll do the same thing over here. All right, turn your head towards me. That's good. All right, so here's L5. Bring you over here. Good, breathe out. Good. A little bit. Good. All right. I'm going to grab your sacrum here. Already went. All right. Does that hurt? All right, so this is an instrument uh, that does adjustments. Okay. All right. Just because we're not getting the response we want. So we're going to go right over here to the glutes and to the sacrum and use this. Tender? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Raise on up. Hold it right there. Pushing down. Don't let me. A little bit better. But yeah, we're going to need to get those glutes a little bit more active during the rehab portion. And I'll check some things out on the other side. Your internal rotation is great right now. Mm -hmm. And it's either that it's easier for you to internally rotate when you're flexed or it's that we just got it moving really well. So, we don't know yet. Not with this one though, huh? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do an adjustment with that one. I'm gonna bring in just to give you a little thrust right there. Try to let it go. Okay. Turn your head and shoulders that way, good. Four, L3, now we're at L2. Uh, rectus femoris hip flexor was what tested weak there. And I'm going to put my hand on your rib cage here. Good. Uh -huh. Good. Lay back. Here. Still, like a lot of these with you today, we're getting like 80% strength. Yeah. We're not getting 100% strength, but that's why people have repetition to get in chiropractic right. treatment sometimes. Um, like straight, I'm gonna pull this one towards me, just okay. like that. Okay. Don't let me do that, ready, go. Good, bring it back. Okay, so that's our treatment today. Amy, what did you think of your experience today? Uh, well, I, you know, I knew I had a couple of issues and then seeing the x-rays, I was a little bit shocked at mm -hmm. how much more was involved and how much more my body was out of alignment than I thought. Did that make you feel good? Like, oh, I knew there was something wrong. Or did that make you feel bad? It like, oh me, no, it's worse than I thought. It made me feel bad about myself, you know, especially being a fitness professional. We like to think that we've got our stuff together and mm -hmm. you know even forward okay so it didn't make you feel good right and then at the same time even though i was feeling bad about myself for being so out of alignment i think it also made me realize if these are things that can be corrected i just need to do that because we found a lot of areas that yeah. number one were lacking mm -hmm. and number two we were able to have improvements mm -hmm. And you saw some fundamental things about how you move and just extend your hips, which 
you know, every single step you take, you extend your hips. Mm -hmm. And and we didn't really have adequacy with that. Right. So, you know, what are the possibilities for you going forward if we're able to positively impact some of these imbalances? It's going to help me with my running and cycling immensely. The problem with cycling is, like, we don't ever extend our hips. Yeah. You know, you're in a seated position, and not that I'm training six hours a day on a bike now, but for years, I did do that. Well, you know, it's actually one of the things with you because your hips are flexed, mm -hmm. you had better flexibility in a flexed hip position. Makes sense. It's part of the reason why probably cycling works so well with mm -hmm. you. And then it's why running kind of opens the door to stress yeah. a little bit more mm -hmm. so than the cycling did. Yeah, so it's kind of the sense. opposite of one another. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but you know, in the end, I just want to be able to keep doing the things that I do and those things that could happen and figuring out what it would be and Mm -hmm. how you can fix it before you end up in a lot of pain. Sure. Yeah, because none of us have perfect bodies. So mm -hmm. the whole purpose of this is not only to get out of immediate pain, if that's what we're in, but also to identify some of our shortcomings with how we move our bodies so that we can positively address that. Maybe not fix it, mm -hmm. maybe not correct it, but positively impact it to where it has less of an impact on the rest of your body going forward. So we don't have unnecessary pain or early onset of degeneration, arthritis, yeah, hip replacements, knee replacements, all that terrible stuff. A little stuff. bit more preventative. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, good. Okay, any closing thoughts? Um, no, it's just great experience and 